left his best, and Bernie won. Bernie won. Oh. Chief economist David Briscoe. How's it going? How's everybody doing? Good. It's great to be here. Bernie won. Not that little sociopathic twerp. So shout out to the CIA agents. Shout out to CIA, NSA, and I guess naval intelligence. Naval intelligence. It's awesome that even when you're talking about like it's like naval intelligence gets so dissed, and no offense, that we, we can't just say what his actual intelligence association was. We're like, no, obviously this rat face buck was really CIA. <laughs> <laughs> I need to go on a meditation retreat. Yeah. <laughs> but I will just say, declared victory with no results in. Lost by uh, 6,000 votes. Complete, relentless media bias, and Bernie's still winning and won. Yeah. Woo! I think we can beat some people who make bad apps. <laughs> That's gonna be Bernie's grand bargain. He's just like, how about we get health care and you can renew democracy? Yeah, go fix Candy Crush. Or yeah. <laughs> Candy Crush for democracy, that sounds great. How about you do that and stay the fuck out of my way while I try to give kids healthcare? It would not be okay, sorry to not be woke. We did have an opening, we usually start, and we have an amazing set of guests here tonight. We have Alona Minkowski. Woo! We have Brandon Sutton, Pretty Bad Lefty. Woo! We have Professor Harvey J.K. We have the terminator of bad logic, Ben Burgess. We have my old buddy and comrade, Matt Binter, for a reunion. And in a couple of minutes, we're going to have a special report from New Hampshire, which I'm very excited about which we're gonna to get to in a, in a little bit. But first, we always open these with a question. And uh, like Jadakiss, we ask why, and uh, thank you. And so, uh, especially because most people on the stage didn't even get that reference. Why did so, Bush knock down the towers? The question we're asking today, and with the very obvious caveat that in this hypothetical, Mike Bloomberg is not paying 10 to one. Although I've heard that he's paying social media influencers, so uh -huh. just want to say <laughs> micro influencers, minor influencers, <laughs> Mike's in there. micro influencers. We can micro influence for him. I would just like to say that e-cigarettes are a scourge. <laughs> Think about the major issues of today. Why are you people still drinking soda? <laughs> the question is, what weak, pathetic? disgusting, beta, centrist democratic campaign would you work on if you were forced to? By the way, we're talking about Mayo Pete. We're talking about Mini Mike. We're talking about old Joe. But we're also talking about wandering Dolas all everybody. We're including her in this, sorry. So, David Griscom, which campaign would you work on? Well, I have a little bit of experience on this, and my first political job out of school was fighting for the working class hero, John Delaney. <laughs> I can tell you all that I knocked on doors and I got him elected to Maryland. It was a very funny job because we had have, we had flyers, like you know, anti uh, Delaney flyers that were going around that were calling him a loan shark. So imagine being like 19 years old being like, no, John Delaney's not a loan shark. <laughs> but I did. <laughs> I did grip him because I realized very quickly how stupid this whole process was and specifically working for John Delaney. And one day I went out there and I knocked on two doors and they all committed to uh, volunteering for the campaign. And then I realized, well, my work's done. So I spent the rest of the day filling in my sheet, right, which is fake numbers for the rest of the day. And I got an award. Best canvasser for John Delaney. 
And if I was out there working for John now, he'd be present for my state. Top shelf talent, TMBS. <laughs> Matt. Uh, so everyone can recognize there's a lot of structural things going on in the economy that might be concerning to people who have long-term careers. It, media is something that's tough. Patreon.com slash TMBS. Uh, there will be merch on sale after the show. Yeah. Support the show and look fly. Hopefully a private equity company never buys TMBS. Uh, and then sells the cards. That I can actually promise won't happen. Um, but so I'm looking at you know other experience for my resume in case this doesn't work out. So I think something that we're always going to need is elder care. And so that's why I'm picking Joe Biden. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can gracefully help him uh, through the next few months. I think I'd be right in there for a job. I really like these. These are strong choices. Even if he was paying market rate, I would love to plagiarize online articles. <laughs> <laughs> Even if it's at a lower rate, it's still wasting some of his money. He's worth $60 billion. Boo! And there's people on television whining about calling him an oligarch. Boo! <laughs> he assembles all the Bloomberg terminals himself. Yeah. <laughs> I, put, I put real Oxford into it. These ones got LEDs. Yeah. It was hard work, and after a long day of installing the terminals, I would go out and bike around Manhattan and look at all the fat people drinking soda. The man of the people. And also, Bloomberg, I don't know if everybody saw this, but the other day, a clip came out from 2016, which first, he basically, he of course said we should throw transgender people under the bus, obviously. But in an awesome... What I loved was that he said it like, he was like, look, not everybody is sophisticated. I understand why men wear dresses or whatever. I'm an intellectual. But people in the Midwest, yo. So he ended up being like unbelievably classist and condescending and also delusional in his self-understanding. And a stronger contender than Pete Buttigieg. Yes. <laughs> and then, in another part though, he did say, and this is going to become my new ringtone. We had a candidate in 2016. His name yeah. is Bernie Sanders. And he would have won. <laughs> but Hillary was the nominee for a variety of reasons. Which we say, yes, and he'll win this time. And you will be on the Kibbutz working. <laughs> I'm really honored by all of you being here. I really appreciate it so much. I just want to say that. Say it a lot for me. Uh, it's an immense honor to do what we do, and we hope we do it well. Uh, and now, I this is going to be a little weird. We've never done anything like this before, but we have somebody beaming in from out of state uh, because, as we know, we're going to New Hampshire, fresh off of Bernie winning Iowa. And we want to see what's happening on the ground there, uh, and I encourage you, if you can, go. Uh, but now, I don't know, I'm hoping our uh, New Hampshire correspondent, are you there? Can you, can you hear me? Hello? Yes. <laughs> David Feldman is in New Hampshire. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, you're breaking up. I'm having trouble hearing you. <laughs> just just uh, hold the earpiece in. We're live. We're going to go to this now. We have a good Chiron for you, David. It's Triumph the Insult Comic Dog. Uh, David... First of all, where are you right now on the ground in New Hampshire? I'm in Manchester, New Hampshire, at Pete Buttigieg's uh, big victory party. <laughs> whoa, wait, wait, wait a second, David. I'm, I'm confused. He's still celebrating, claiming to win Iowa? No, this is for New Hampshire. <laughs> and Nevada. And Nevada. <laughs> and Nevada. Okay, so is Pete saying how he was justified claiming a win here? He's getting it all out of the way to focus on South Carolina. Big win, and uh, quite frankly, I'm disappointed, as you know, that you sent me out to New Hampshire to be an objective journalist. Uh, you know that I'm a big Bernie supporter. <laughs> well, yeah, way back, of way back, way big Bernie supporter from way back. I'm an old lefty. I'm an old lefty. 
So you wonder why kids don't trust the institutions? Why would you send an old lefty like me, a big Bernie supporter, to cover the, the primaries in New Hampshire when I'm so obviously in the bag for Bernie? <laughs> well, I think, David, I think our kind of argument is that as long as you're transparent, we're all big Bernie supporters, that as long as we're being honest and clear, uh, that we're not misleading anybody, like the Chris kid. Cuomo or anyone else on cable television. Yeah. <laughs> big Bernie supporter, love the guy, and uh, I hope he bounces back from that defeat in Iowa. <laughs> Wait a second, David, hold on. He won 6,000 more votes from Pete Buttigieg. By the way, this isn't even a big left position. It's been the official position of the Democratic Party ever since Hillary Clinton managed to lose to Donald Trump. That winning the most, most votes is all that counts. Even Pete Buttigieg said that himself a couple of weeks ago, a couple of months ago. Uh, listen, I love Bernie. He lost in Iowa, and quite frankly, uh, uh, I'm ashamed. I think he's a bad sport. I think if he, I think if he wanted to win Iowa, he should have said he won before Mayor Pete said. <laughs> So wait, so let me get this clear, David. And of course, we know that you're a very strong Bernie supporter. Big, from, from way back. From way back. <laughs> you're saying that because Bernie Sanders waited and 